Hello, I'm Juan Davies, Chief Creative Officer at KCT MPB of SoCal, and we're joined by the newsroom of KPCC and LA is on a daily reporter roundup. Let's start with you today, Lita. What is the latest with COVID numbers here in the LA County? Right, so after about three weeks of data crunching and a lot of concern since Labor Day, LA County health officials now say that they don't expect to see another post-holiday surge in COVID-19 cases. That's not to say that there won't be any more cases tied to the holiday weekend, but even if there is an increase, officials say it's not expected to be quite as bad as what we saw in the weeks following Memorial Day or the 4th of July. So while that is a little bit of good news, there is still a big question mark over whether that means LA County can move up to a less restrictive tier in the state's economic reopening plan. The county initially met the state's requirements to advance from the purple tier to the red tier last week, but the numbers need to hold steady for a second week in order to get the green light. So the state will give an update on Tuesday on which counties have met that threshold, but County Public Health Director Barbara Ferrer did cast some doubt on our chances. She said for the week of data that the state is looking at right now, case numbers were actually slightly higher compared to the week before. So we will just have to wait and see on that. Here in Southern California and around the country, we're continuing to see instances of cars and trucks driving into crowds of protesters, and in some cases, striking them. Robert has more on that. Yeah, the most recent example we saw was this past Saturday when a car drove into a crowd of protesters and hit two people in Yorba Linda. It's not clear what exactly led up to that incident, but the sheriff said they would charge the driver with attempted murder and assault with a deadly weapon. And then just last week, uh, we had a large truck drive through a crowd of protesters marching in honor of Breonna Taylor in Hollywood. One woman was struck uh, and was taken to the hospital with minor injuries. The driver of that car uh, was released pending the outcome of a hit and run investigation. Across the nation, though, there have been dozens of incidents um, of drivers hitting protesters. One researcher at the University of Chicago said that between uh, late May and early September, cars drove into protests more than 100 times. But at least right now, there isn't enough information to determine intent in a lot of those cases. Santa Ana winds have started to kick up here in Southern California. And Jacob is here to explain how that contributes to fire season. I mean, it's simple. It's like dry vegetation, strong Santa Ana winds can mean unstoppable, fast moving fires that can trap people. Um, if you live in an area that could burn and a red flag warning is issued, meaning it is going to be dry and windy, you should get ready to evacuate in advance. You should put bags near the door or in your car. You should fill them with enough clothes for a week in case you have to leave. You should add medicine, jewelry, cash, important documents, anything you can't afford to lose throw in some food and water for extra safety and watch notifications from the county and the city that might tell you if you have to leave. But you should even consider leaving before mandatory evacuations are issued because, you know, and this is a very uh, LA sounding thing, you might actually get stuck in traffic on your way out of certain areas, especially if they're particularly remote. And finally today, Olivia is here with more from a conversation she produced with 101 year old LA resident Winifred Winnie Carter. Yeah, we had the pleasure of speaking with one of Los Angeles' oldest residents, Winnie Carter. She's 101, and at that age, she has lived through some of the most pivotal moments in our country's modern history. She was born the same year women were granted the right to vote, and she grew up in the midst of the civil rights movement. Given that, she is truly no stranger to unprecedented times. We wanted to sit down and talk to her about everything from the first time she cast her ballot for FDR to her experience as a transcriptionist for the Pentagon at a time where Blacks were experiencing widespread segregation in many parts of the country. Even when I went to the Pentagon, we were segregated there. We had to go by bus. We had to sit in the back of the bus. It was a really growing up experience and a, a rude awakening, I should say. It, it was so pointed. It made you feel kind of second class, really second class. Thank you, Olivia. I, I wonder, what does she say about what we're experiencing today? The biggest distinction she made was that at the 60s, people were just beginning to feel comfortable with speaking up and talking about their issues. But right now, everything seems so critical that people are willing to fight for it. Thank you, Olivia. And thank you at the KPCC and LA's newsroom. And thank you for tuning in. Take care of your health, your family, your neighbor, and we will see you tomorrow.